my name is Imad Zand. I'm an entrepreneur from Sweden, and our project is called Refugee Air. So Refugee Air was founded uh, essentially as a reaction to two things. One was the picture of the three-year-old Alan Kurdi, who essentially looked exactly the way I did when I was three years old, and, and the feeling of despair I felt from just seeing the unfairness of that situation. So that was one aspect. The second aspect was that Hans Rosling, the famous Swedish professor, created a video regarding the economics behind flight versus smuggling and how absurd it was that people had to pay so much more to, to uh, be smuggled if they could fly. And uh, being an entrepreneur, you know, you try to look for solutions wherever they might be. And I, we saw this as a very practical way of you know, applying uh, the skills you learn in the business life to try to solve a real world issue, which was pressing and important to tackle. So two things. One is the campaign, uh, hashtag let them fly, which is a conversation starter and a, and a debate tool to create awareness around the issue and, and uh, get more people involved across all of Europe to see that uh, regardless if you're a pro-immigrant or not pro-immigrant, having people dying on the seas is a stupid solution. Something needs to change. So, so that is the, the Let Them Fly campaign. The second portion is, is the refugee air, which is essentially how do we solve it? And we're going to craft a solution. We're going to implement that solution through flying an actual airplane to Sweden and then sharing our findings with the world so other people can also uh, replicate the model. Uh, about two and, a, two and a half weeks ago, and we've reached over 400 million people in that time period. We have uh, fully financed the aircraft. We've found uh, partners to work with on the ground when it comes to selection process. We're in contact with three governments uh, to be our partners in, in our inaugural flight. We've done all the legal due diligence necessary for this to work on Swedish soil. Uh, we've done a lot in, in this short period of time. So the idea is that uh, Lufthansa and KLM and SAS will have much more flight capacity directly when our solution is unveiled, then we will be able to muster in the next coming year or year and a half. So the whole idea is that how do we leverage what we find? Because we can go out and take risks, meet people, work with NGOs, put our own money on the line to show that a new way is possible. And when we have done this initial investment, other companies and organizations can piggyback on our investment and implement it. So that's why we're doing one aircraft as a, as a starting point. Well, I, 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 think, I think it's surprising. I mean, it's, it's surprising that you say that this is uh, uh, controversial because if, if it wasn't refugees, everyone would think that this was normal, that they would fly. Uh, so th that statement in itself kind of shows how we are viewing refugees. Like people are fleeing Assad and Islamic State. They're not fleeing the Middle Ages, right? <laughs> These are people that have smartphones. They have uh, uh, internet. They use bitcoins. Uh, they can get on a flight. Uh, so so when we have this conversation, it's also Im important to inform that. The, the people that are coming are very much like you and I. And, uh, and uh, when you do that, people then start intuitively changing their perception about who's coming. And, and then uh, it becomes much easier to understand why our project is actually... If you didn't have any biases, this is what, how refugee situations would be handled. You would fly them out. Well, honestly, uh, I think, and, I, and I, again, maybe this is controversial, but I don't believe that it's anyone's right to be born in Europe or grow up in Europe with, with the situation that we have. We are all very lucky. Like, I, I came, my family came as immigrants to Sweden, 
and at the age of two and and you find a lot of people that come as immigrants to Europe that they are you know oh my god uh, they're they're sad about their situation because they feel like they are you know underprivileged or one way or the other uh, I on the other hand think that wow this is amazing I live in this great country of Sweden and I have peace and I have security I have uh, food and water and opportunity and uh, and if you realize that that there are so many billion people in the world that don't have what you have you're actually not you didn't earn this you were lucky even if you were born, born Swedish or you came to Sweden as I did you're lucky honestly if, if everyone reflects on that then what do you do with that information that gives me uh, it humbles me in the sense that I did not earn what I have currently it was a stroke of luck and, and if I have been given this opportunity to do something w because I have resources, I have knowledge, I have people around me that want to help, then what should I do with those resources? Should I you know, get a private jet and go somewhere to enjoy myself or should I use that, those resources to help and better the lives of other people? And for me, naturally, helping other people is, is, is the common or, or the most you know, logical response to, to my situation. I wouldn't say that it makes people more aware. I'm very surprised by the fact that if you look at general media, people are very cynical, right? They're like, yeah, people, uh, there are 200 crazy people in, in Finland, for instance, that created a human wall not to have immigrants fly over, uh, walk into their country. No one is talking about the, you know, 99.9% .9 of other people in Finland that are currently helping refugees coming over. But when you create a campaign like this and people understand it, then you see, wow, there is so much support out there. Human beings are much more generous and optimistic than one believes. They just need an outlet to channel their, their enthusiasm. And I, and I really, really, really strongly believe that in the future, you would see more crowdsourcing of ideas, of resources when we have uh, crisis is because a crisis needs a quick response and governments inherently are slow working apparatuses so if you look at all across Europe they are volunteers organizing along the refugee trails there are people helping people there are Airbnbs for instance being created I think in the Netherlands for refugees these are all private uh, human beings trying to help each other and it's beautiful <laughs> It is so, so beautiful if you think about it. I think in the coming months you will expect more European countries actually sharing the responsibility of refugees because they will see that the, the people are actually leading the way and the politicians need to follow. And that's a great, uh, that is actually a great sh show of democracy at work. And I think you will see more technical solutions being developed in the refugee space. Everything from apps to help people navigate, to homepages that give people refuge in terms of homes, to people like ourselves that you know, put in together systems of knowledge from, uh, from different NGOs and try to put them together so people can fly. So I think you will see more of these uh, you know, tech-oriented solutions to global crises. So the problem is not having the plane. We have more than one plane already lined up. The, uh, the, the issue for us is can we allow, can the governments trust each other enough to let the plane fly? And, and that's the law. In terms of business solution, I crafting the solution, the solution is done. It was done after 10 days. The airplanes, the landing permits, financing, screening tools, all of that was set up already. Now we're just working on getting the governments to accept our solution so we can fly. Because we want to do this in a sustainable way. Anyone can get a private jet and fly people in just to make a point. But that's not why we're here. We're here to show that there's a sustainable, better way of doing it.